us have been hit hard financially by the coronavirus. That's especially true for many millennials who entered the workforce during the last financial crisis and haven't fully recovered. What can this generation do right now to better their financial situation? Steve Siebold is a certified financial educator from HowMoneyWorks.com, and he joins us with five tips to regain your financial foothold. Welcome, Steve. Thanks a lot. Your first step is something that's not often taught in schools. It is learn how money really works. Exactly. Yeah, we don't, unfortunately, we're not taught these things in school, but we need to learn the basics. Things like compound interest and how that actually works the rule of 72, the time value of money, these basic principles that you can teach a 14-year-old kid if someone was out there teaching them. That's what we're trying to do with this book. Now, you mentioned some of those. Those rule of 72, for example, what is that? It's basically how, it's, a, it's sort of a mathematical shortcut to, to determine how long it takes your money to double at a fixed interest rate. So for example, if you have, you're getting 1% on your savings account, it would take you 72 years to double your money from $1 to $2. So we're talking about millennials and trying to get them to maybe even think ahead about their financial planning. Exactly, because they have the, the most important thing with money and that's time. And that's the time value of money. They've got years to let compound interest make its magic. Whereas if you're over say 40 or 50, then you don't have quite as much time. Ah, the luxury of time to let money work for you. What a nice thing. Definitely. Now, your second tip is think problem solving instead of job hunting. I'm really curious to hear what this is about. Well, the millennials, as you know, have been really strapped with two major things since they, since, you know, a lot of them graduated from college in 2005 and, and onward with first the Great Recession and then the, and then of course the big coronavirus shutdown. And so the job market has been very, very tough on this generation more than any other generation, older and younger. And so we, what we're saying is don't go out and look for a job. Look to solve problems for employers. That's how employers think. They think about solving their problems. They don't think about, they don't want to hire people. They want their problems solved. So if you go in with that mindset in a job interview, you're going to do a lot better. So basically sell yourself. Show how you're going to be an asset. Tell how you're going to be an asset. Yeah, sell yourself personally, but more so about the, uh, sell yourself on the problems that you can solve for that particular employer. Do your research, find out what kind of challenges they're going through and what you can possibly offer with your skill set and your education and your background to solve those problems instead of trying to just get a job. Now your third tip is ask your boss for more responsibility, not more money, which sounds a little counterintuitive when we're talking about earning more money, but I bet you can explain it really well. Yeah, I, in my companies over the years, I've employed more, more than 500 people, and I, I don't know how many, I don't even want to know how many I've interviewed over the years, but certainly thousands of them. And of course, you see it differently as an employer. And, and what, you're, what you're looking for is for people to take response, employees to take responsibility off the shoulders of either the owner, if it's a small business, or the management team, if it's a larger business. You're trying to get responsibility off of people's shoulders. So if you can come in and say, hey, let me take the, or if you're, you have a current job and you say, hey, boss, let me, let me, what else can I do to try to make your life easier, or my manager's life easier? Um, I don't, I'm not looking for more money. I just want more responsibility. I've, with all the people I've employed, I've hardly ever heard that in my entire 30 year entrepreneurial career. But if people are really smart, if when they have jobs, that's what they do, because that's what employers are looking for. Yeah, I think it would be really refreshing for an employer to hear that from a millennial. And not only that, it would probably lead to more money in the long run if you have a, a dedicated, hardworking employee like that. Definitely, because no one will do it, whether it's a millennial or a boomer or a Gen Xer. I mean, I've employed them all over the years, and no one no one thinks like that. They're thinking like an employee, and what you want to do is think like a boss or think like a, a manager or, a, or an owner. Yeah, put those shoes on. Your fourth tip is rent a room. It's more practical. Rent a room instead of a par an apartment or a house. Well, housing costs, as you know, are continue to, to, to rise, even though the economy is in, is in a shamble, you know, a little bit of a shamble right now. Uh, rent a room if you're if you can do it, if you're single and, you, and, and that makes sense, or even if you're married and that makes sense. People are renting rooms all over the country now, and they're trying to, of course, you know, get some some, some income from their property. And you can rent a room for a fraction of what you can rent an apartment or a house for. So that's just another way to put more money in your pocket to try to regain some of these losses that uh, that the millennials have incurred since the, the shutdown. 
That's right. Take a knock on uh, mom and dad's door once again. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Number five is sell off any non-revenue producing assets you have. Now, what are those? Yeah, anything that you have. I mean, anything laying around that you might have, uh, you know, uh, yard tools, bicycles, uh, computers, uh, old phones, who knows? I mean, you know, that's amazing the stuff we all gather over a period of time that's just sitting there. And, you know, what wealthy people do is they invest in assets, not liabilities. And most things are liabilities. They're non, they're non income producing, in other words. And so get rid of those assets and, and build an emergency fund. Most millennials by, by study don't have an emergency fund. So if they have an unexpected expense, which we all do from time to time, they can't cover it unless they have a credit card. Well, I imagine a emergency fund would come into use right now. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Well, Stephen Siebold, certified financial educator from HowMoneyWorks.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Alana.